Hey folks, um, so I'm just going to explain a little more about the Book of Two Ways 4,000 year old Egyptian uh, map of uh, America and Afro Eurasia. I mean, technically, it seems to be only a map of Eurasia. It doesn't really include Africa because I think the Egyptians already knew Africa so well since it's their home and also because there's just not as many gatekeepers in Africa. The main gatekeeper is like the Horn of Africa or the, uh, I don't know, Djibouti or something like blocking the entrance and exit from uh, exit entrance to and exit from the Red Sea, but I'm sure they knew that one by like the back of their hands, so. Uh, get rid of this. Wait, how do I do that? So I've been looking at this and, so this seems to be Britain and this, his wand, seems to be Ireland. I'm calling it a wand. It could be like a knife or something, but <coughs> it's not, it's not a knife. It's not one of the obvious knives, knives like uh, some of the other gatekeepers wield. So I'm going to call it a wand. Um, but anyway, like one thing they got right about Britain is that it's long and it's wider at the two ends and it's skinnier in the middle. So that is true. Like right here is like the skinniest part basically or around here. And it of course gets wider down or you know, here in the north. This is upside down or not, not upside down, but you know, it's with uh, south as up in this one um, because I was trying to figure out like I'm not sure how exact this is meant to be um, it might be turned around backwards like the other last gatekeeper on the other side uh, Japan is um, or no not Japan but uh, Kamchatka Peninsula is the last gatekeeper on the other side and it's turned around uh, flipped around the opposite uh, way. So this might be flipped around as well. I don't know. That's something that they sometimes did in these maps. Like they'd show the same image just flipped up the opposite way. So makes it extra difficult. <laughs> but you know, like. <clears throat> In terms of this guy, uh, well, at least like one possibility is that <clears throat> um, like I'm not sure if his arm is something specific. Like by its placement, it looks like he... <coughs> I mean, this is assuming it's flipped. So I flipped this image the opposite way to face to the right instead of the left. So in that case, this would fit better because <clears throat> his head is bigger than his butt and England is bigger than Scotland. Um, and his waist is closer to Scotland. And that's, or, you know, it's closer to his butt, which this, the, the narrow part is closer to Scotland than to Southern England. So in that sense, it would seem that maybe, you know, his beak is, um, you know, Cornwall here, Cornwall and Devon. Um, and... 
So, and it might include, maybe his head might even include um, Pembrokeshire here and even like Anglesey and like the rest of Wales here. It's hard to know because um, it seems like his head is like the widest part of, of him. And then it kind of tapers down to his body and and so then it's hard to know if his arm is actually meant to represent something specific. Um, I was thinking maybe uh, that it was like this, what really looks like an arm, which is the Kintyre Peninsula, or if it's Strathclyde here, that both of which go very close to Ireland, because I think this you know wand thing is Ireland even though, again, it's not shaped like Ireland, really. It's just... Um, but yeah, the closest part of Britain to Ireland is this arm-like peninsula. Um, you know, Kintyre, and and then the kind of base of it is like Napdale. And that's like my kind of one of my ancestral homelands of the Campbells, like, lived there. So that's the closest thing to Ulster, where, which is another ancestral homeland of mine. Um, and then this is Strathclyde, you know, and Galloway and stuff like Southwest Scotland, which is the second closest to Ireland and is another ancestral homeland of mine because uh, probably my paternal ancestors, the Millars, probably came from here and my maternal ancestors, the Campbells probably came from here. And then they both moved to here and then they moved uh, to here. All right, so, um, but it's not clear, you know, like, so I'm thinking that this, like this is, I guess this is what I'm leaning towards now. It's not, uh, it's not an easy, obvious thing at all. But um, this is the theory I'm going with right now, is that uh, this right here is Shetland, uh, the Shetland Isles, and right here is uh, Orkney, the Orkney Isles. So um, I'm guessing that Shetland and Orkney are form his tail just as the Kuril Islands form the tail of, uh, you know, the Japanese uh, gatekeeper. The Kuril Islands that taper off of uh, the northeast corner of Hokkaido. So similar, the, these taper off from the corner of, uh, you know, from the northeast corner of Scotland. And so, you know, if so, it's a very inexact shape. And a lot of the ones on this map, this version of the Book of Two Ways are very inexact. Some are pretty exact, but some are not. Um, so then I would assume that his tail and his butt like somehow includes all of all of this and so this huge bay right here isn't accounted for you know and I'm not sure about his feet what his feet would be if his feet are here in the um, Hebrides or what um, so you know and this this would make sense for him being the gray haired or the white the white haired one uh, Be-Sechem or something it means like hair without blackness basically can mean white haired or gray haired but I think it refers to the white cliffs of Dover so I'm not sure if the white cliffs extend the whole southern uh, the whole of southern England or if it's just certain parts but you know the chalk in the uh, cliffs 
makes it white. So it's always been known as like the White Island, Albion, Alba. So, you know, that would make sense with him here. And it's also right. So that would make sense this being his hair since this is his head. And maybe especially if this is his hair, then this would be like right here. So maybe that is Dover. Um, although ironically, that part is not white and it's his face that's white on this. Um, so yeah, this one is pretty confusing, but you know, I was just reading another coffin text that was mentioning the, the gray haired or white haired one. And it was saying he shows his, his arms to me as I come or something. So that might be that, could even be that all these peninsulas south of, uh, south of Cornwall, that maybe all these other peninsulas are seen as like the arms of the white haired one. Cause you know, there's, it seems like a lot of people would sail between these to get to, um, to go north to America. You know, they'd sail from here to here, and then they'd go to the uh, the Faroe Islands are like up here or something, and then they'd go Greenland or you know Iceland is like right here, Greenland is here, and then Newfoundland and Nova Scotia and Labrador are like right here. So, um, so like in True Story by. Lucius, I think, or I forget who's the author, but it's from like, you know, 2000 years ago ish. Um, it talks about the route to the underworld as being between Scotland and Ireland. Like it says first, um, first dock at Cork. So Cork is like around here somewhere in Southern Ireland. I think it's here. And then you sail out from Cork uh, to the east a bit until you're between Ireland and Britain. And then you sail north. So you go through this, and then that's a way to go get to um, the Faroe Islands and uh, Iceland and Greenland and America. So that seemed to seems to have been a traditional route. Um, and in terms of the arms of the white haired one, it makes sense that that's what you're going to be worrying about is all the appendages of, you know, the peninsulas of Britain, as opposed to Ireland, Ireland, you don't have to even notice because it's like, I mean, you don't have to think much about it because there it's a pretty smooth uh coast it's pretty easy to sail around ireland it's not so easy to sail around britain <clears throat> so and then uh and then yeah these island groups here seem to be i think this one is shetland this one is orkney and this one is the Hebrides, something like that. Um, so, you know, I think it's possible that Shetland and Orkney and the Hebrides could both be part of this deity, but also shown next to him. Because in the world of symbolism, you can do stuff like that. Um, So yeah, that's pretty esoteric. It's hard to really know for sure. Um, from the America side of that map of B5C, seem to have found another, I seem to have located one of the gatekeepers, one of the Southern gatekeepers seems to be this. Um, it's pretty cute. Kind of looks like the, when a bill becomes a law, guy like Mr. Bill or whatever, but, uh, you know, it's like a little wrapped up bill that like has legs and stuff. But yeah, so this, 
Like I was first thinking it was another one, like, but uh, I was first thinking that it was uh, this guy here. Because this was the first one I saw, and I just noticed that on one side it's kind of split in two, and it even kind of has a little thing on the right side of it that could match this uh, line going off the right side of that one. Um, so, you know, I was like, okay, let's, maybe it's very stylized. But then I found like the other one, which is so this one is the one of the Fal two Falkland Islands, kind of maybe the bigger of the two Falkland Islands. Um, whereas this one is in uh, it's west of the Chilean um, Patagonian ice fields. It's in that the, all those kind of islands, archipelagos off the west coast of Chile. Um, or I guess that's pretty much the main coast of Chile and off the south coast. Basically, there's just island after island from like most of the Chilean coast, I guess, and then to Tierra del Fuego. <clears throat> But anyway, so this shows like it shows all these other little guys. So I think these are all these other little islands and they're more like nondescript or whatever. But then this one's the bigger one and that is the case. It is bigger than like all the islands around it. And so it's pretty inexact, but and also depending which map you look at, it's easier or harder to see the uh similarity like some of the um like the google maps if i look on google maps they kind of almost give a different shape of it so i'm not sure why that is but this map this is like this 3d globe app gives a shape that fits well enough with this you know it's flat on the relatively flat on the bottom relatively flat on most of the left side up until the top where it curls over. And then it goes, has an indent at the top which curves to the left. So that's of course true, it curves very much to the left. And then has one thin part that goes way out to the right being this part here and then the rest of it goes down so it's certainly not the exact shape given but the the general contours are there like the uh there's kind of a bump here an indent and then it goes down to a point so you could say there's a bump here an indent and then it goes down to a point right here and then it kind of curls around and then goes like that. So again, this is very much same shape minus the legs and the hand and the knife that he's holding. So this is like a regular knife of a gatekeeper. That's why I call Britain's uh, knife or Britain, whatever Britain's holding, basically Ireland. I call it a wand. I mean, there's a chance it's meant to be some other kind of knife, but until I find that out, I'm going to call it a wand. So, oh yeah, by the way, this is called Wellington Island. Um, and the only inhabited place on it is called Eden, Port Eden. Because, you know, the people back when, when America was being settled, Europeans still knew that America was the underworld and was Eden. Uh, you know, like Columbus knew that. It's basic Dante-ish uh, cosmology. And also, this is the island. So, you know, as Dante described, Eden is like, like the underworld is, you know, pointing the opposite direction because it's antipodal to Afro-Eurasia. 
and the tip of the underworld is the furthest down and it's a mountain a snowy mountain mount purgatorio which is also eden and um so this is an would be natural if you came in here and they already knew that it was supposed to be in south america um then you know columbus and all these people identified south america as the site or at least the center of eden so this would be a natural designation uh well this is from uh rob zombies uh monsters movie i was just impressed that he actually had dark skin egyptian uh, depiction he must be better educated than a lot of the uh than whoever made this stupid reconstruction of uh of el uh, uh abu symbol temple in uh, egypt and they made it they made ramses skin like super they just gave him like a light tan, but really like all the pharaohs were depicted like dark brown. So, and sometimes black like this, but not light browned. Um, all right, so other things I wanted to say are Let's see, so there's okay, this is not helpful. Let's go. And that's Lesko's book, Leonard Lesko. Of, uh, of UC Berkeley, I guess. So I was, I'm thinking also that this one, I may have, uh, like I keep jumping around with what this little guy is. So I, um, in this one, I made it as as though he's this peninsula here. This I forget what it's called, but it's like the biggest Chinese peninsula. And you know, there's also another peninsula over here that I was wondering if it was. So then I concluded that it's probably this. It's probably uh, Leizhou Peninsula and Hainan Islands. But so I was assuming like the head is like Hainan Island that's like facing the sailor and the tail must be the peninsula. But basically what I'm thinking now is there's at least as good or more of a chance that the head is actually um, the peninsula and the tail is the Hainan Island. Because even though the tail is not made to be super thick the way it should be, it's certainly longer than the head. And I would say in this case, uh, Hainan is certainly wider, but also longer than Leizhou. So yeah, I might have had that backwards. It might be that the tail is the island and the head is the peninsula. Um, so that's what I lean towards right now. Um, let's see, I was trying to memorize all the little islands in here. You know, there's, uh, they are the, um, they are these, the white parts of this, um, of this worm or snake or whatever it is that is behind the tail of Kamchatka. 
So that's what I mean when I say Kamchatka is turned around, because in this, Kamchatka's tail faces away from Japan, which is the opposite of the reality. So I'm thinking it may be like in some of the America maps that the last gatekeepers are flipped around backwards. So Britain and Kamchatka. But, um, and it really does, like these islands really do start right at the, I mean, you can see there, it starts right at the end of the tail of Kamchatka. So you can see like a, um, the white, so if I'm interpreting the white parts as the islands. So that would make one little island first in front of the eye, then a long island uh, behind the eye, and then a bunch of little islands along the tail or you know along the body. So this fits with reality, of course, because they're actually uh, that is what it is. You know, there's a, um, we well, can't see it here, but there's a tiny island right at the tip, right off the tip of Kamchatka, which is called uh, Shumshi. Then there's this long island called uh, Paramushir. And then there's a series of small islands like Onekotan, Harim Kotan, uh, Shiash Kotan. Uh, Chirin Kotan, um, you know, Matua, Rasua, um, Ketoi, and C, um, C Mushir. So those are all like right through here. So I've been just memorizing the names of these islands so I can be more on top of my game here. Um, but yeah, Paramushir is like by far the biggest. And Mushir, I think it just means islands in uh, Ainu, because these are this is where the Ainu live. You know, they live uh, here and on Hokkaido and on Sakhalin, and I think also on Kamchatka mainland. Um, So, you know, that's a thing. And what else do I got? Um, See, so yeah, it's possible that the arms of the white haired one referred to all the British peninsulas and that they're all just referred to the arms as the arms, the white haired one and, you know, seen as, of course, major obstructions uh, for sailors of the Irish Sea. Um, here's Marajo Island and uh, Garupa Island and the Marajo uh, Archipelago. So this seems to be the gatekeeper. This is like right on the, right on the um, equator, and it's almost the exact same latitude as the gatekeeper of the east coast, um, Puna Islands, which separates uh, Peru and Ecuador. So. These seem to be maps, ancient Greek maps of, uh, of some sort of uh, terrain, but it's not entirely clear what, which terrain could just be the islands, like Santorini Island that this is from, but it could also be further afield. It could be the underworld, America, or it could be other parts of Europe or Asia or what, Africa or something it's from this island. Um, oh, and then, let's see, there's another one that's, all right, well, there's another thing I would, I kind of want to show that's on the, 
that basically the Tierra del Fuego island seems to be its own gatekeeper and, uh, you know, I'll at least try to show it just on the, um, okay. Where this thing is. Okay, I don't know. Basically, it's like a um, some kind of hippopotamus or something with a um, it's, uh, this guy down here. So even though he's so far from the coast, Based on his size and shape, it seems like he can only be Tierra del Fuego, the main Ilha Grande de Tierra del Fuego. And um, no idea what this is. This might be Cuba. This might be Del Marva. I don't know. Or this could be uh, Newfoundland. And this also, I have no idea, but this seems like it has to be um, Tierra del Fuego. So I'll try to bring up a photo of Tierra del Fuego next time to show. But uh, And then here's that um, Chilean island. So it seems like maybe all the little islands around here are just given in a separate section because there's so many of them. Uh, yeah. All right. So such is the such. And um, thank you very much.